What's up, everybody? It's Christina Dot Ingram. I'm back with um. I think it's just going to be a stream of consciousness uh, <laughs> about certain subjects that I normally focus on. Uh, just because I'm running, I don't have a lot of time <laughs> to edit, uh, come up with ideas, and the more equipment that I get, the more I want my video quality to be better, which means I need to do more editing and put more thought into it. So I said, you know, there are like five subjects I'm trying to hit um, this week that I have been really, really um, not really vocal about because uh, I just was doing other things or handling uh, personal issues or just working or doing stuff 41 year olds do. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I was laughing at myself though, because I'm legit doing things age appropriately. I had just, uh, my tummy, I had cold stones last night <laughs> and uh, my tummy is a little rumbly and uh, I literally, yes, Canada dry. But because I'm sensible, I also have one with zero calories and zero sugar. <laughs> so it should balance each other. It should balance each other out, right? It should. So anyway, um, yeah, just a little bit of info, catch up wise. Um, it looks like this will probably head off into like a vlogging kind of podcasting thing. So um, just working on getting new equipment. Like I said last time, last time I did a decent uh, length video, working on new equipment. Um, and just really looking forward to um, getting more into editing and effects and, and um, just talking. You know, if I if I wasn't in in the medical field at all, I would just talk for a living because... I wake up talking and I <laughs> go to bed talking and I feel bad for my spouse actually because I talk a lot. So, <laughs> but I, but I love it. Um, so yeah, look for more longer form videos from me. Um, TikTok, I gave TikTok a good three months or so. It's not for me. And when they took the music off, I was like, yeah, this is definitely not for me. Um, and now there's talks of them shutting TikTok down. Um, and so I'm just kind of like, yeah, let me just go ahead and stick with Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, what I know. I never was a, a Twitter or X person. So um, I'm, I'm good with those three uh, platforms. And it's still Um So yeah, that's the intro. I think every week or every other week, I'll come out with a longer form video. Um, basketball season is upon us. And so I want to go ahead and... Um, get started. You know, I took a break and didn't know, didn't say anything about taking a break, but I got kind of burnt out by the games. You know, I have the NFL, not the NFL, NBA um, subscription where you can see all the games. And so, you know, after a while, I just felt like I was just kind of staring at a screen, hearing the same voices announced. And I was just like, okay, can we hurry up and get to the playoffs? Um, and because the all-star game was such a letdown, I was just really deflated. I was just like, okay, but we're going to see what we're going to see. All right. The first thing we're going to get into is basketball. Um, my worst nightmare has come true. My worst nightmare was that all of the California teams <laughs> are in the play-in. And um, to make the pot even hotter, they had the nerve to throw New Orleans in, in the pot. New Orleans is so dangerous. New Orleans is so dangerous. Um, uh, it's stressful because my team is Sacramento Kings. If any, you guys know, uh, follow me. I love the Sacramento Kings, but I live in Oakland and work in San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> the reason I became a Sacramento Kings fan was when I first moved here from North Carolina, I, uh, being a huge Warriors fan, you know, Steph Curry was all the way over here, raining threes and everything. It was a huge, huge deal. Um, for the Warriors to win that first championship. I can't remember which year it is. I'm sure somebody will be able to remember. Um, but um, when we moved here uh, to the Bay Area in 2015, I saw how it seemed as if um, the fans were not appreciated the the Warriors fans were not appreciated when they were at Oakland Arena. That's what it seemed like to me. 
um, um, the prices were sky high. Um, and, you know, the Oakland Arena was not uh, going to be, or it was an oracle at that time, was not going to be redone. And so they just said, fine, we're just going to go across town over here to San Francisco and, and do the Chase Center. And um, kind of like h- how the fans were and the people that I knew that were Warriors fans, um, it was hard to watch. And it actually turned me away from the Warriors. So it wasn't a, 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 against any player per se, but just the way the the actual team uh, – shifted from a town literally from Oakland to San Francisco. I thought it was crazy. And I think I just kind of got caught up in all the emotion with um, other Warriors fans who were just really upset. Um, And so it's very much along the lines of the way folks are feeling about the Oakland A's right now. Um, So, yeah, I ended up being a Sacramento Kings fan because I love basketball and – I wanted to see these games. You know, I came to California as a Warriors fan, but I couldn't get a ticket. I couldn't afford a ticket by the time I, you know, by the time I got to California. And I was just amazed. It was just amazing to me. Um, So I ended up being a Sacramento Kings fan and um, I was hooked. Uh, You know, I've been a fan when we had um, Halliburton, you know, when Fox was still early on uh, from Kentucky uh, pre monk days. It ain't been that many years. Let me not sit here and say I've been a Sacramento Kings fan all my life. Cause that is a lie. So, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. That's all that to say. And I am heartbroken. Uh, let me just get my laptop <laughs> to see that the play in, um, is basically all the California teams and, um, New Orleans. Hold on. If you're lost, you can look and you will find me time after time. If you fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting time after time. This is real. <laughs> I'm really trying time to talk this to my... Time after One of these days I'll get a desk too. We'll see. Time after It's coming time. bit by bit, yeah. All right, so... Time after time. Oh, my God. The standing... So Western Conference. Uh, tomorrow, April 16th, uh, which happens to be my brother's birthday. Shout out, Brad. Uh, happy birthday, bro. Um, so at the, uh, so the SoFi NBA play-in tournament starts uh, tomorrow. Uh, number seven is New Orleans. Number eight is Los Angeles Lakers. Number nine is Sacramento. Number 10 is Golden State. And can I say... Out of all of the teams, I'm most d- disappointed in Sacramento Kings. They have lost some pivotal games here. In the past one past couple of weeks, they have lost some pivotal, important games. Golden State has been doing well. And L.A. Lakers have a way of winning games that matter. They look terrible when, they, when it doesn't matter. And they win games when it matters. I'm not a believer because I'll never be a believer in the LA Lakers. I'm never going to be an LA Lakers fan. So I'm not going to call myself a believer, but I see the pattern. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually think Sacramento is not going to pull through because of New Orleans. Um, they have lost, I believe, every single game this year against the New Orleans Pelicans with or without Zion Williamson. And it's sad. Um, it's kind of depressing. <laughs> I got a little faith in them because I'm hoping they have something up their sleeve that they have not been using. But, um, you know, we'll see the first game. Uh, so it's paired off in the playoffs. I mean, the play in it's paired off with uh, New Orleans and uh, the L.A. Lakers versus the Sacramento Kings versus um, Golden State Warriors. So we gonna see. You know, it's always interesting to see Golden State and uh, Sacramento Kings play because they're like, what do you call them? Doppelgangers? Did I say them right? Doppeldangers? I don't know. Somebody's going to correct me and say, where did you get a fifth grade education? These folks in these online streets. (laughs) It is doppelganger. 
a noun, an apparition, or double of a living person. If you tell it, it's you're clearly black, somebody's gonna say something about your race. You know, you're educated, somebody's gonna say you're not educated enough. I'm like, yeesh. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so th that's all I'm going to focus in on right now. Th that's really all I'm interested in with regards to Western Conference at the moment because the playoffs have already been set. OKC is number one, which I'm not going to sit here and say I told you so because I kind of did, but I kind of didn't. But they were one of my teams to watch from the beginning of the season. I just love watching these guys play. I'm really, really proud of them. Really, really proud of them. And I'm glad that OKC gets another chance at this. Um, you know, they had a chance before with Russ, uh, KD, and and, uh, and James Harden. But, you know, it did. Okay, so this portion of the video, um, I just would like to bring up that I started using the word materialize excessively. And I own it. Um, I apologize. <laughs> um I will be using a thesaurus um, and I'll be just kind of intentionally inserting more of a colorful vocabulary in the future. Um, bear with me, but uh, I don't know how many times I said materialize, but uh, I know it was more than twice. Uh, you know, comment down below how many times you heard me say it. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get back to this video. Mater materialize the way they want it to. Do. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in OKC this year. Um, but yeah, so and just quickly, the play-in um, for the Eastern Conference, you got Philadelphia number seven, Miami number eight, Chicago number nine, and Atlanta number 10. Never trust Chicago. <laughs> never. I will never change that narrative this season. Never trust Chicago. If Chicago ends up winning the championship, I'm still going to say never trust Chicago. Chicago should never be trusted. <laughs> um, not Chicago Bulls. No. Philadelphia. <sighs> you know, this actually, the East Coast did not turn out the way that I envisioned the play-in to turn out. Um Miami is always that team that everybody says, oh, they can't do it again, and they do it again. So it's going to be interesting to see how Philadelphia favors out. It's going to be interesting to see how Atlanta favors out. You know, you, we have pivotal, pivotal, pivotal key players that came back after injury. And so we'll see. We will see. But let me tell you, I'm sure Indiana is looking mighty they are mighty glad that they they missed out on that play-in because it just seemed like Indiana wanted to let it slip away. Looking at the playoffs uh, on the Eastern Conference, Milwaukee, I hope they have something up their sleeve. I hope they have something up their sleeve. Because Dame's getting older and um, – it seems to me like Giannis is getting impatient. I hope Milwaukee has something up their sleeve. Cleveland, you know, Cleveland, you throw them up in the air. You just never know how they're going to fall when it comes to the playoffs. Regular season, they're always good. It's the playoffs where it just seems like, I don't know if it's Donovan. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know why Cleveland seems to just not I – mean, didn't do well last year and I'm concerned about them this year. I hope they're able to kind of get it together. And Orlando is great to see Orlando in the playoffs. It's great to see um, three teams that I had to watch uh, for everybody to watch uh, early on in the season. It's great to see them, you know, it, in playoff position or a possibility in the play in. It's not an, I told you so it's just one of those things where I'm just really glad because I really, really thought that those teams were special. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead and take a sip of this. Let me tell you, sometimes when you're lactose intolerant um, to the point where you remember not to eat dairy and then you forget because you haven't had like ice cream or or whatever. Mine is just ice cream mainly um, that upsets my stomach. But um, 
sometimes we forget and then you get a craving. And that what happened with us last night. I was like, ooh, cold stove sounds great. Ooh, God. Let's move on. I'm going to be uh, checking in uh, throughout the week about, you know, the game results. I'm really excited about um, the Western Conference play-in, though. I just, ugh. The only team that knows how to beat the Pelicans really is L.A. Because they got long-ass Anthony Davis and determined-ass LeBron James. <sighs> Let me move on. Okay, so music-wise, um, I haven't really been listening to any new music. Um, I'm actually looking forward to having a music podcast, um, hopefully in the near future, probably next year or so, uh, with a friend who has um, history as a background, professional background vocalist, which I just think is amazing. And so, you know, we have a lot, I guess I would dub myself a music enthusiast, if that's the right word, but we have a lot in common with regards to music and our love for music and what we hear and stuff. So I'm really, really excited. I keep moving around. I hope that's not bothering you guys because I'm not going to do much editing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and obviously I'll give updates if if it happens or I may end up just branching off on my own if it doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, it's always good to like bounce ideas off of other folks. Um, so I hope that that materializes. But What's really been, um, what I've really been enjoying lately is soft rock. Straight up 70s, 80s, early 90s soft rock. Um, you know, it reminds me of uh, being a kid going to sleep to Light 98. And um, I think it's a station still in Richmond. Um, they used to have all of the bangers. You know, a little Journey, a little Eagles. You know, a little Christopher Cross sailing, takes take me away. away. You know, it's just so, it's such a mellow vibe. And I used to go to sleep to it. Mom used to, um, my brother and I used to share a room. Uh, he was really, really little, like crib little. And we would go to sleep to like 98. And so I used to wonder, and of course I don't remember those things until I get older. And I used to wonder why I always knew all these lyrics you know, <laughs> to all of these songs. And my mom would say, you know, because you went to, I used to put you to sleep to soft rock, you know, light 98. And so I'm actually grateful for that because um, I think it helped broaden my musical palette, if you will. Um, but um, yeah, I've been kind of digging a little bit of uh, solo Steve Perry, listening to Foolish Heart, a little foreigner. I want to know what love is. Um, I ran into one of my favorite performances is not even Foreigner singing that song. I I don't remember if it was the NAACP Awards, the Soul Train Music Awards, but it was like all these black artists. Um, or it could have just been in the AMAs. All these black artists, and they it was a mic toss, and they were singing I Want to Know What Love Is. And I think, uh, was it Patti LaBelle? That was what she used to wear them crazy cat weeks and she she did one of those ah! I was like oh lord <laughs> man let me tell you Patty in a mic toss used to kill it used to kill it do you hear me and they everybody was here for it everybody was here for it um so yeah but back to soft rock I just really appreciate the genre it's very lo-fi now when i think about like what lo-fi is and um how it makes me feel like how it makes my body feel it's very similar like if i put on lo-fi like a lo-fi l-o-f-i um and folks you don't know what lo-fi is i'll put some information um i'll probably freeze this i'm gonna be instead of doing like crazy cuts and edits i'm just gonna be like jumping in and just putting like either the the graphic up or just free framing this and editing or whatever so um yeah i lost my train of thought i don't know what that was but let's move on <laughs> um yeah so that's music 
I've really, really just been enjoying. Oh, yeah. If you type in, that's what it was. If you go to YouTube and just type in lo-fi and whatever mood, lo-fi chill, lo-fi happy, lo-fi sleepy, whatever, there's a certain type of music that will pop up. And when, and it, it's, it helps you be productive. It helps you rest. Um, and it's not non-intrusive music. So it's like, you can have it going, but still be able to think, do, speak. And so, um, lo-fi really gives me the same feeling that soft rock used to give me. Um, soft rock used to really, man, this mic is good. My nose is stuffy and I just heard it in the mic. <laughs> um, it used to give me the same kind of, uh, sensations, good feelings, good feelings. So, you know, just kind of digging soft rock these days. You know, if you have a favorite soft rock song or something, drop it in the comments because, um, I'm all about it. If I haven't heard it, I'm all about listening to it again or just revisiting it. You know what I'm saying? Next, TV, 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 TV. First off, I wanted to go ahead and plug Abbott Elementary. If you are not watching Al Abbott Elementary at this point, what are you doing? I need you to catch up. I need you to catch up. I need you to get to know all of the characters, and I need for you to go ahead and do a, not a deep dive, but just go ahead and get lost in it because it's just very wholesome, very sweet, hilarious they have some nuances that are um i think important um and i think that it's just a it's just a a good show it's very hard number one to have a good show i think and i think it's very hard to have a good clean relatively clean show that's funny and a relatively good, clean show on network television. That is like hardly ever happens. And so the way that the plot is in season three, yes, we're in season three already. That's why I'm saying you need to catch up. Um, the way the plot is going in season three, I don't know which way. What, how Janine, who's the main character, will kind of be in two worlds. Um, and that's what I will say. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing how all the relationships uh, materialize. And um, I'm just really, I just really, really adore that show. There's no other show on network TV that I make a point to watch when it comes on. Because you can watch everything DVR now. But like, I am like, Wednesday? Mm, I hope I got that right. <laughs> I'm watching, I am watching Abbott. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Abbott's on. Or, or my wife is like, oh no, hun, what are you doing? Abbott's on. I'm like, oh, we got to stop everything. You know, it really gives me like back in the day when, when the Cosby show, before we knew who Cosby was, the Cosby show or a different world was on. And I would wait until the commercials to go to the bathroom. You know, it's like everything stops. Or with Seinfeld, Martin living single, same way. Um, so yeah, um, get on to Abbott. It's on, it, it, it's really worth it. And you don't even have to thank me once you start watching it and you get that first chuckle in, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> um, next the Jared Carmichael show. This is a show that I love to hate. This is a show that makes me cringe from the moment I hit play on the DVR. Or is it on, where is, where, what channel is it on? I think it's HBO, if I'm not mistaken. Because I'm like mainly all apps, um, I watch it on Amazon Prime and I have the HBO add on. <sighs> At the, or Max, I should say. Jared Carmichael is so honest that it hurts to watch. Um, the first three episodes I've watched, and it is addictive to me. These are my opinions. It's addictive to me because it's, 
it's a train wreck, but the train is gorgeous. The train is gorgeous. Um, he doesn't seem to like himself very much. Um, and he knows it and we all know it. Um, he, there's a lot of self-loathing, um, that he expresses. Um, there are a lot of comments that are hard to hear, but a lot of it is funny. That's the hard part. I think if you are a positive person, just genuinely positive that it's never really gone through anything like catastrophic, then you may not understand it. Um, or you may just not want to be in a, pulled to that space. So that's the thing. Like either if you've been through what he's been, he's been through and you don't want to revisit that again, I could see where it's unattractive. Or if you're just an overall happy person, like okay with your life and you're just going about your business, I could see why you would not want to watch this either. Um, but for, for some of us who are kind of like both ends, kind of for me, um, it's interesting. The first episode, he told his best friend who happens to be Tyler, the creator, that he was in love with him and Tyler, Tyler, the creator laughed in his face and went in the other room and farted where all the camera and crew men were and women. Um, and Jared still pushed it. He pushed it more to invite him to the, was it the Grammys or Emmys or whatever? Tyler did not respond to the last, 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 last minute said, oh, I got something to do. And it's kind of like, why do you keep doing that to yourself? But I think it's just because he kind of just wants the answers that I know that he probably won't get. But it's just like you're. It's just hard to watch. The second episode was where he was dealing with his, his sex addiction, which um, I didn't think was too much. I think what was too much was um, no, it was too much. It was too much. When I think about it now, I mean, he was like sucking toes on there. Like, I was like, what is happening here? It's a lot of guys like he was on the date, dating app. And so like some of us who are married or got married before like dating apps were really, really, really uh, all folks used, um, you know, and I've heard about Grindr or I've heard about other dating apps, particularly for gay men, but I've never like seen it live in action. So I thought it was interesting to see like what actually happens, you know, how it happens, but not the actual <sighs> it was stressful for me but i like stressful situations for some reason to an extent to what i can control <laughs> i was like okay where is this going and so he has um some issues he seems like he wants to work out through comedy and through reality tv um i respect that it just I think the heartbreaking part was that he had a boy. He has a boyfriend who seems to really love him that he's like lying in real time on reality TV. And the boyfriend is right. It's just, but people do that in real life. So that's the thing. Like, is it that horrible of a show? If this is really what happens all the time or often with people, you know, he's just bold enough to have his own reality show, to work his own stuff out. And he says, this is the way I'm going to work my own stuff out. I mean, I don't know. The third episode, I think, was the hardest for me to watch. It was uh, the premise was, am I a bad friend? And he is absolutely a bad friend. And this is not me judging him because you're talking from one bad friend to another. I've had moments um, and people in my life where I just was not a good friend. One instance in particular, a, a person um, in my early 20s that I was really close with, and she was an, a wonderful friend, wonderful friend. Um, you know what's most annoying? 
this is random, but what's most annoying is I rarely ever get texts when I'm not doing anything. Now I sit down and decide I want to do a recording, and now I get like three texts <laughs> in a row. I'm like, the timing is impeccable. The people aren't annoying that are texting me, but it's just like, yo, I t- literally, it took me 30 minutes to set everything up or do what I was going to do, and it was nothing. But now all of a sudden, anyway. Um, yeah, so I was in my early 20s. And I had a really, really close friend. Um, it was after nursing school. No, so it was, yeah, early. No, it was mid to late 20s. And um, I did some dumb stuff and lost a really good friend. And it was never, uh, never repaired. Never repaired. And sometimes I think about it. Um, every so often I shed a little tear. But it's not something that, you know, I just you know, I beat myself up over it. It's just when you just miss the person. But, um, yeah, Jared was not being a good friend, not being a good friend. I mean, his childhood best friend came to visit him cause she had this dream of being an actor, but she was in education and he was just kind of didn't have the heart to tell her, you know, this is not an easy thing to do to break into Hollywood, you know, he has her up there and it's just, you know, she's just chilling in his house and he's just getting annoyed by the day. And it's because he can't have his hookups in his house the way he wants to. And he gets her an apartment and then ghosts her. And I'm not saying gets her an apartment long-term. I, to my understanding, he got the apartment. He got that apartment for like a month. And then she called him just to call and he ghosted her. He goes to her. Um, so that was weird. And then there was another time where um, he was supposed to be a best man at his childhood best friend's wedding. I'm not even going to say what happened, but he was a horrible friend that day. He was a horrible friend that day. We have those moments uh, where we're just not good friends. We're, we have moments. I think we all have moments where we're not just, we're not good people in general terrible (laughs) but you know um i think because it's public um it's hard to watch but i'm gonna keep watching it because it's interesting um i actually find myself praying saying a prayer for him because he seems so low and so self he he seems to really despise himself um and so you know i think I don't know if you if you've ever been in that position. Um, It's not good. It's not a good feeling. And so um, I don't know if it's just for shits and giggles and for views and everything or if this is just really this is really, really his life. But this is a different type of reality TV. And I think it's actually groundbreaking. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad groundbreaking, but I think it's groundbreaking in general because it's so intrusive so intrusive um but who uh, who are we to say how a person's path to healing looks and this is what it is to kind of help him reconcile relationships with his family reconcile the how he's feeling about himself and um how he feels about the world how he feels about hollywood how he feels about his partner, if they're still together. I don't know. Um, you know, then so be it. Um, lastly, I wanted to talk about um, something that I rarely talk about, which is actually my career, nursing. So I'm going to make this part short because it's more of along the lines of a questionnaire. Um, I've been kind of trying to tackle, figure out how to tr- tackle healthcare and nursing for a while. Um you know, I have conversations at work all the time with coworkers, and it's just really interesting. But because of, um, and I'm not talking about conversations about patients. I'm talking about just in general, the state of nursing. Um, but because of HIPAA, because of legal issues, and because I would like to stay employed uh, <laughs> as a family nurse practitioner, you know, I respect all of those things. And, um, you know, I kind of wanted to know what direction 
Um, because there's things that we talk about all the time that I talk about, but I think the main things that are coming up for me, which I wrote down, were how's everybody feeling about per diem versus permanent? Do you what are the benefits and drawbacks? You see what I did there? Benefits. <laughs> um, how how's everybody feeling about per diem and permanent? Um what is the state of nursing overall? And when I say that, I mean, do you think the pay the pay is correct? Do you think there are certain certain states um, that really did, got it right with the pay versus cost of living? Um, do you think the mentoring? Do you think we as experienced nurses and nurse practitioners, um, CNAs, LPNs, LVNs, are we mentoring? Are we mentoring the folks coming up under us? You know. Or are we just kind of just letting them just fall by the wayside? Because the generation that's coming up under us, there's a different way of communicating um, than what we're used to. And when I say we, I mean folks that are like 35, um, 35 plus, 40 plus. Um, and so have you been able to connect with folks that are coming in that are new? Or do you find it more to be more difficult? I need to wrap this up because my battery is getting low. Um, pandemic students. Um, both sides, pandemic students, when you, when you were in school during the pandemic, do you feel prepared to practice now? And on the other end, um, uh, nurses, nurse practitioners, everybody on the, in, on the nursing, uh, CNAs, LVNs, LPNs, when you have, when you work with folks who were trained during the pandemic, do you notice any difference? Do you feel like uh, they were able to catch up or do you feel like it's a disadvantage? Um, and, how do we feel about AI? How do we feel about robots? All of those things. You know, I used to work with a pharmacy robot. We used to work back in 2013 with with pharmacy robots uh, through the VA. I mean, so they're more prevalent. But I wanted to know what you all thought about that. Um, I got to wrap up. My battery's low. I promise I'm going to get new equipment. I love y'all. Bye.